I want to start off with the evolutionary mystery of homosexuality. Now, you're a gay. I am a gay. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why are you this um, way? So basically, I just, you know, I wanted to have it a little bit harder. So I was like, I'm going to choose to be Please gay. don't be vulgar so. so soon into the podcast. Wow. <laughs> oh my a little bit lord. Goodness, Goodness me. me. Wow. You know? I don't know, okay? Because I'm a good <laughs> Christian boy and I'm not going to have sex until everyone on the planet is married. That's yeah. what Jesus said on the Sermon of the Mount. That's what he said on the cross. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, there is some evidence that homosexuality is in some ways heritable, right? So that doesn't mean that your parents are gay and that makes you gay, you know, like the way that your parents are black and that makes you black go watch the race episode to see why that's not true um anyway um, there's some evidence that homosexuality is in some way heritable so the bbc uh in an in, a, in an article said that since the 19 uh early 1990s researchers have shown that homosexuality is more common in brothers and relatives on the same maternal line and a genetic factor is taken to be the cause but the issue arises obviously when considering how genetic traits propagate within a population uh, for humans there's no lateral gene transfer right we're not bacteria so you you can't you can't you know pass um can't catch Genes. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, that's true. Yeah. That's true. You can't catch I can't pass my well, genes to you. Not genetically. You could catch it mimetically. Uh that uh, all the kids on TikTok making each other gay. That's the theory, isn't it? Someone stupid like that. The, 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 the sex education's making the kids gay. Something like that. Yeah. Mimetic transfer of, of homosexuality. <laughs> I love the way you discuss things. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yes. No. Absolutely. So what I'm saying is that there's no there's no lateral gene transfer amongst humans. So I have my genes all in my DNA. I can't be like, oh, this is a good little this is a good little gene. You want this gene? Delicious. Yum, but yum. You can't have it. It doesn't oh. work. Doesn't it? Doesn't work. The only way that I can share. Thank you. The only way that I can <laughs> share my genes with with anyone else is through sexual reproduction. And even then. I'm not giving you my genes to keep. I'm giving you my genes to make a little baby and pop that one out, right? Like, you don't get to keep my genes. The only people that are going to get my genes are people that are sort of below me in the sort of, you know... Um, social hierarchy. Children are below me in the social hierarchy, I suppose. <laughs> but, um, and also my kids at this point are going to be more white than me, so they're going to be above me. Anyway, um... <laughs> So, no, my point is... That <laughs> God. I'm, people say this when I make jokes about racism, and I'm like, I'm not the racist one. I'm merely pointing it out, yes, okay? Yes. No, so my point is that you, I can only pass genes down the sort of line. I, I can't, you know, pass them to someone else that's already existing. The only way you can pass genes on as a human is through sexual reproduction to produce offspring. So this would basically bring up the sort of idea of natural selection, right? So your genes are your blueprint for you. You get them from your parents, right? We understand that. Mm -hmm. Now, if your genes contribute positively towards you producing offspring, then you'd be more likely to produce offspring than those around you. So for example, if the guard has a gene that makes it really likely that he's going to, you know, find a lady friend and make it, make a bit, well, hold on, wait, no, hold on. Um, now, if <laughs> Luke has a gene that makes it like okay. Let's say it this was too unrealistic. <laughs> Even the water, like <laughs> I was picturing it, you know, and I just could, I, it, it, I couldn't. Part of that sentence true. Mine was conclusion. blank. I've yeah. never had more aphantasia than yeah. in that moment. <laughs> 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 so if Luke, for example, let's say that red hair, um, you know, being a ginge yeah. was something that meant you were more likely to produce offspring. Oh. It, it, it conferred some kind <laughs> of <dream>. benefit. <laughs> Unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> let's pretend, hypothetically speaking. Now, let's say that was the case. Now, if Luke was in a population of people that had, you know, um, some of them had red hair and some of them had different hair colors that, you know, weren't as good as this red hair mm. as, you know, getting him to produce offspring, then you'd you'd expect Luke to have more offspring um, or, you know, the people with red hair to have more offspring than the others, right? Mm -hmm. And what that would mean is that the genes that you have would be more common in the next generation and it'd be likely that those red hair genes would be more common in the next generation, whereas the genes for other hair colors would be less common in the next generation because they're less likely to produce offspring. The dream. You know, so um, conversely, Genes that hinder your ability to produce offspring are less likely to be present in the next generation. So in reality, having red hair, for example, makes you less likely to produce offspring because... Oh, I don't need to say it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, that was mean. That was mean. I'm making fun of. I, it's it's not Ginger as I dislike. It's only Luke. So <laughs> no, no. Okay, so let's say that you had a, a gene that hindered your ability to produce offspring. So for example, if we go to the absolute, you know, uh, the absolute extreme of this, let's say there was a gene that caused you to be infertile, right? It'd be you'd be unlikely to pass that gene on. Or if there was a if there was a gene that caused you to you know um uh, to die before puberty you would be less likely to pass that gene on and so that gene would be less present in the population because people with that gene would have a, a lower likelihood of reaching the age of sexual maturity and being able to find a, a mate and then produce offspring and not just people organisms right this is basically natural selection survival of the fittest right so what is the issue here when it comes to the gays well i mean obviously uh, at least for all of human history, other than where they went against their natural sexual instincts, um, the gays have generally not had babies because they are gay. Uh, so they have I to. I didn't know where that was going. Yeah, I was for a really. I, I swear to God, I was so stressed out for a moment there. We had an eye contact moment. Yeah. Like I did not know where you were Need going I with say, that. Like, do I need to explain this? No, 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 it, no, no. 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 It was when, it's when you said going against their natural. And I, I was like. What's going on there? <laughs> you you ended it perfectly well. That's okay. perfectly fine. It's the just gays, it stuck. The gays have sex with not people who they can make babies with, usually. So yeah. unless yeah. they don't do that for a bit, they're not likely to pass in their genes. So if being gay is genetic, how is the gene propagating itself? Ooh, exactly. Wow. Yeah. And then you read some books and you find out how. Right. Keep thinking genes, like genes, genes, not like genes. Denim. Yes. And it was really funny. I was just imagining that the whole time. <laughs> the reason that you are the way you are is because your parents had a pair of genes that they got from their parents and they gave them to you. Yes. You know, it's like the sisterhood of the traveling <laughs> pants, right? Which, by the way, seeing the name of that book series as a as a British person, that was very strange. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants is a book oh. series for young girls. It is not about <clears> girls <throat> sharing a pair of underwear. It's about sharing a pair of trousers. Yes, right. That one was one. Just, yeah. Uh, that needs to be like have be philosopher stone sorcerer sorcerer stone for England. It does. Okay. Yeah. Like it. It gives it same with fanny packs. Okay. I had to explain to a British person the other day. Like they were, they were like, oh, we, we call them fanny packs at home. And I'm like, no, we don't call them fanny packs. <laughs> and, he was, and he was like, why? Wait, what? But like, like, because you know why? Because fanny meet the fanny pack is an American because it's the same as bum bag because fanny means bum in America in the UK. It doesn't mean that. What if you were on the, on the on your front? It can be a fanny pack then. So anyway, <laughs> by virtue of the fact that most homosexuals will be in a relationship with someone with whom they can't conceive children, it means that they'd be less likely to pass down their genes, right? Homosexuals produce biological kids at you know, a lower rate than heterosexual people. Um, and of course, artificial insemination is now an option, but from the perspective of, you know, human evolution, it's a relatively recent advancement and it doesn't really explain anything that came before it. So, given the apparent evolutionary dead end of homosexuality, how has the trait persisted in the gene pool and not just disappeared into the biological ether? I know the answer. What's the answer? It propagates through other people who do not actually express the trait of homosexuality. Um, and that homosexuality is some sort of strategy, uh, like evolutionary strategy that can be activated or not activated depending on environmental factors, for example. In the same way that the um, gene that codes for the runt of a litter of puppies dying propagates in the other puppies that don't die because they are, they weren't the one that didn't have the that had the least food, so that gene didn't activate, um, but they still carry it and they still pass it on to their children. That's one potential explanation, right? And what I want to do is pull our minds out of just the genetic answers and consider the sort of broader aspect of gayness because. Gayness isn't necessarily inherently genetic or entirely genetic, right? I mean, we've done an entire episode on the gay gene, so maybe uh -uh. there are other things. That's definitely that's definitely a hypothesis, and we'll definitely cover that. But I don't want to sort of get the idea across that that is 100% definitely the way that this the way that sort of um, this happens. Mm -hmm.